shouldn't be, but you know, Carmen prays for me, makes me a little more nervous. And <laughs> I heard this story recently from, you know, I was listening to the Comedy Channel and Jerry Seinfeld came on and said he uh, read a poll stating that public speaking was man's biggest fear, second only to death. Uh, so he said that means that most people would rather be down there uh, than up here. So that's where I'm at right now. Uh, my goals for today are to share some stories, verses, and quotes that I enjoy and, were, and, and are important lessons in my life and to get us out all uh, before the Chiefs game. So <laughs> it's a night game, right? <laughs> uh, I'm going to start today with family. I'm impressed that uh, the family and friends that are attending today. Uh, I know Lisa regularly attends, but it was nice of my children to come today. They were the three that came in late. <laughs> the Neapolitan, you know, red, brown, blonde. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, you got to love it. They are a joy in my life. Uh, and... Uh, another plus is they are all three gainfully employed. <laughs> Jess just got a promotion, so you can ask her about that afterwards. Uh, so, and then Mom and Aunt Billy are here. Uh, I think they're both still trying to keep me in line. And I thought I'd share with this, for you younger folks who think you have it tough because you get grounded from electronics or certain activities, I will share with you that Bill and Ruby, my mom and dad, did not preach Proverbs 13.24, but they practiced it. <laughs> Proverbs 13.24, those who spare the rod of discipline hate their children, and those who love their children care enough to discipline them. Well, they must have loved us a lot. <laughs> I'll tell you. In fact, dad, who was a principal at Lathrop, as many of you know, both in high school and middle school, Believed it so much, he took it to school as well. I continue to have folks around town who tell me my father gave them swats at school, and, and I assure them that I received more in one week than they ever did. <laughs> I, I can remember Dad telling me one night, and it wasn't me, me and Todd, it seemed we always were in there together, that you could just come back here every night, and I'll give you swats, and then you tell me what you did that day. <laughs> Uh, and I can remember Dad's advice to Lisa and I after Jessica was born, was to love your children and they will survive the mistakes you make. His concern was for the children who did not feel loved. As most of you know, I was raised by a coach and my father was raised by a coach, so it's hard for me not to relate life to sports. Also, with the success, success of Lathrop Sports have had in recent years, go Mules! Um, so as I see it, God has provided us a playbook, Bible. As I read my playbook correctly, if I do, he wants us off of the sidelines and into the game. And as you live your life, be bold, trust yourself, and take the next challenge. Do not be a spectator, but be an active participant. I consider myself a lucky man to have such a supportive church family and lifelong friends. I moved to Lathrop when I was three months old. Some of you knew me before I can even remember. Other school friends I met as early as three. Actually, one of them's here today, a Methodist. We got him to come to the Christian <laughs> church. Uh, we have remained close ever since. I can remember in this church, David Green, Merle's youngest, making me laugh so hard in the back of the church I thought dad was going to use that rod of discipline when we got home. And uh, I can remember during a song one time that uh, their mothers were in the choir and their fathers may have let them slip away, but a couple of young ones got up here on stage and were dancing. And I hope they did not get in trouble because a sure sign of a successful church is children. I know the church we were at in California would have done anything to have little kids in the congregation. I know when we were there, Jessica was really little, and I can remember her once asking what I was doing with that girl 
after church, and the girl she was referring to was over 70 years old, <laughs> and she and I were taking communion to the homebound members of the church. I remember uh, several stories about my friends from the class of 81, Porter and uh, our doorman over here too was in our class on, uh, but I think I'll save those stories for a different setting. I would encourage all of you to nurture the friendships and connections that you've made. I know the friendships I made at Lathrop around the U.S. and the world continue to add confidence, joy, and richness to my life. 1 Samuel 20, 17, Jonathan made David reaffirm his vow of friendship again, for Jonathan loved David as he loved himself. Here I have a story to share I read this here recently. A man was tailgated by a stressed out woman at a busy intersection. Suddenly the light changed. However, several people were still crossing the street. So the man waited with patience. The tailgating woman was furious and honked her horn, screaming in frustration as she missed her chance to get through the in intersection. As she was still in mid-rant, she heard a tap on her window and looked into the face of the very serious police officer. The officer ordered to exit her car with her hands up. He took her in the police station where she was searched, fingerprinted, photographed, and placed in a holding cell. After a couple hours, a policeman approached the cell door. She was escorted back to the booking desk where the arresting officer was waiting with her personal effects. He said, I'm very sorry about the mistake. You see, I pulled up behind you while you were blaring your horn, flipping off the guy in front of you, and cussing a blue streak at him. I noticed uh, what would uh, the, I noticed the what would Jesus do bumper sticker, the choose life license plate holder, and the attitude is everything bumper sticker, and naturally, I thought you stole the car. <laughs> so the moral to the story uh, is that your attitude is always on display. Pick a good one. And that's from Attitude is a Choice. This is a book I recently read. He, I heard this guy speak, and I think he speaks a little better in his books. But if you're into these kind of books that have quotes and stuff, I have two up here. I'm giving away today. Uh, I have heard this growing up, and, and my kids had heard it as well. Life is not fair. It takes hard work to reach your goals in life, career, relationships, faith. Seek a relationship with God. But if from there you seek the Lord your God, you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. Deuteronomy 4.29 As some of us get on the downhill side of life, it becomes even more apparent that the most important priority should be faith, family, and function. When folks are at the end of their lives, they typically do not wish they had worked seven days a week, 24 hours a day, but they do wish they would have nurtured their relationships and faith more. That is not to say you should not seek to be successful in your work, just that your work should support your ability to nurture your friends, family, and faith. Please remember that sometimes if we do everything right, we will still have setbacks. If you have a setback in life, take a deep, deep breath, regroup and get back in the game. God does not promise an easy road, but he does promise strength for the journey. Isaiah 40, 29 through 31. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired, and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on the wings of the eagles, they will run and not grow weary, and they will walk and not faint. And also Joshua 1.9. For those of you who were looking for Joshua 1.19, I don't think it exists. So I think we had a, I must have gave Jessica the wrong number. But this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is <coughs> with you wherever you go. Another bit of advice I was given was never miss, never fail. This goes a long way. Uh, this goes along with get off the sidelines and into the game. I learned this in a coaching class I had 
<clears throat> in college given by an academic athletic director at the University of Missouri. He told his athletes you cannot help but learn and contribute if you are in class. Also as an employer, being there on time and there every day is vital. As the quote goes, 80% of success is showing up. I was attending a speech once by a CEO of a large corporation. He told us he was often asked what he did to achieve that position and he said, I simply did the best job at the task I was given at the time. And each success led to the next. Focus on the job at hand. And please remember, we are called in life to serve. Luke 22, 27, for, those, for who is the greater, one who reclines at the table or one who serves? Is it not the one who reclines at the table? But I am among you as the one who serves. In Proverbs 3, 37, do not pass by a man in need, for you may be the hand of God to him. Also reminds me of a quote from Edward Everett Hale. I am only one, but I am still one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. And because I cannot do everything, I will not refuse to do the something that I can do. The next point is life happens. There will be things that happen in your life that may be or seem like a setback. But keep in mind, some people we consider very successful have had setbacks and even failures in their life. Examples, Abraham Lincoln lost a run for political office and failed at running a general store before he was 25, and he is now considered one of the greatest presidents. Henry Ford, Ford Motor Company was his third attempt at business. The other two didn't work out. Walt Disney, he was fired by a newspaper editor for his lack of ideas. Later, he had some success founding a company called Disney. <laughs> J.K. Rowling, she had a short failed marriage, was jobless and a single parent, and from that became the writer of a story franchise called Harry Potter. And Michael Jordan, if you like sports, you always like these, right? He was cut from his high school basketball team before later becoming one of the greatest basketball players of all time. So I'm thinking either that was a great high school basketball team or Michael Jordan went to work to become the player we know now. The next time you feel like giving up, remember that Coca-Cola only sold 25 bottles their first year of business. A saying I do enjoy, good judgment comes from experience, and experience, well, that comes from bad judgment. I'm not sure Walter Payton was ever a failure, but it's interesting to me that Walter Payton was the second leading rusher in the NFL, having over 16,000 yards. The amazing thing about Walter is not that he ran over 16,000 yards, but that he got knocked down every 4.4 yards and just kept getting back up. It is also notable that the NFL Man of the Year Annual Award for Service is the Walter Payton Award. I like quotes, and here's another one from Mary Pickford. You may have a fresh start at any moment you choose, for this thing we call failure is not falling down, but staying down. Get back up and into the game. Remember, if you ever have a struggle on your faith journey, we would welcome you with open arms. I can remember Dad giving a message when I was young about the long history of faith in our community, as can be seen by our four brick churches in town. Uh, recently at a men's breakfast, Donnie Quinn gave a message of Christian unity. I would like to challenge all of us with what I learned from that message. Let's work to remember the beliefs we all agree on as Christians and less about why we are different. I feel strongly that we live in a Christian community united in service and faith. God never promised you a beautiful past. He promised you a bright future. There's a quote from Sam Glenn. So a quick summary of the lessons I learned. Love your children. Stay in the game. Nurture your friendships. Attitude is a choice. Life is not fair, but do not give up. Seek a relationship with God. Remember faith, family, then function. And God provides strength for the journey. Never miss, never fail. Life happens, never give up. 
and be a community of Christians. I read about a Special Olympics event, event in a large stadium. The participants were lined up to run the 100 meter dash. That race was started, but after a short distance, the runner fell. First one of the others stopped, and then they all stopped. One girl with Down syndrome bent down and kissed the person who fell, and then they all helped him up and finished the race together holding hands. The fans in the stadium did not cla stop clapping for 10 minutes. Please remember, sometimes it is not about how you start your race, but it is about how you finish. <coughs> and then I'm going to throw this in there, but tomorrow's Veterans Day, and I do not want to forget thanking all those who have or are serving now. <coughs> you answered a call from your country, and for that we honor you. True heroism is sober, very undramatic. It is not the urge to surpass others at whatever cost, but the urge to serve others at whatever cost. That was a quote from Arthur Ashe. And I will finish with this. So since I work for the city, I'm going to give you a little bit of update. <laughs> we just finished the safe routes for school sidewalk. Street upgrades are getting closer to the first bid. <coughs> the sewer collection system upgrade has been approved and should be funded by the